I'm just waiting for, there we go, IG to catch up, and it did. Let me move this jacket out the way. Boom, boom, boom. It's going to be dope. I've been super excited. This has been a hot minute coming. It's been long awaited, never duplicated. It's been long awaited, for real. Like, um, yeah, I'm pretty sure when I got my X100V, right it's really weird fuji doesn't really use the numbers until now but when i got my x100v everybody said which i think was like october everybody said oh uh there's gonna come out with a new one it's gonna come a new one i was like yeah i know but i don't care <laughs> anyway uh this camera has been the hardest camera to get this entire time right like if you when i got this People on eBay were looking for the X100V into the $24, $2,500 range, and it's a $1,399 camera. But I wanted it, and I wasn't going to spend that kind of crazy money, so I put it out into the burst. Hey, man, I want a X100V, and I'm not paying a crazy price. The very next day. I mean, the absolute very next day, my buddy Jefferson Graham calls me up and he says, hey, I'm doing a setup with Paul's camera in Los Angeles and I need some help. I was like, bet. So I was talking to him, answering questions, whatever. And while he was testing it out, he said, let me introduce you to my homie Paul from Paul's camera. And I'm like, bet, a friend of Jeff's is a friend of mine. So in conversating with Paul, we were talking about what we do, and I'm like, yeah, I'm a Sony shooter, but, you know, recently I've been getting into, like, the Rico and, you know, doing a lot more with my, my ZV because I wish it was the RX. I wish I'd never let go of the RX that I had before. And, and he was like, why? And I was like, you know, as a content creator, I'm always lugging my big camera, and sometimes I just want to shoot for shooting sakes. I just want to have fun. And I was like, so I've been thinking about getting this Fuji X100V. What do you think about the camera? And he was like, man, those things are so hard to get. And yeah, but it's a great camera. And if you just want to shoot for fun, you're going to love it. There's nothing better. So for so on, et cetera, straight from um, a man from Paul's camera. I swear to you, fam, this is how the universe works when you tell the universe what you want to do. It was no more than two hours later I get a message from him and he's like, hey, you just came in stock. The person that was supposed to pick it up is not going to pick it up. Do you want it? And I was like, bet. How much? He's a dealer. He's a camera star. So he can't he can't make the price, you know, fake. So I got it for normal price and craziness. But anyway, at that time, everybody and their mama started talking about the X100. Let me turn it sideways. The X100 6. The actual word for this one is 6. Everybody called this one V, <laughs> but this is the 5th gen. This is the 6th gen, right? Um, this is the first one where you're actually using the word instead of what the letter nomenclature is. Anyway, this, yeah, let's get it open. Let's just open it. We're we tired of playing games out here. Uh, if you need to know more, this is the food site. You just head over there. And what is it under? It is under FujiX.com. It'll be the first thing up there, and you'll see what all the hype train is about. But let me move my mouse and things out the way. Boom, boom, boom. There it is. This bad boy right here, I got it from Pro Camera Hawaii. Why? Why did I get it from Pro Camera Hawaii? Support your local camera stores, people. Support your local camera stores. You know what I'm saying? So go and check out Tony guys at Pro Camera Hawaii. Tell them I sent you. As a matter of fact, let's say hi to them. Pro Camera Hawaii. Let's see if let's see if they pop up. Anyway, um, yes, literally the best gang in town. If you need anything, if you're ever in Aina and you need a rental. 
or you know you got this camera you're thinking about what should i buy what should i buy normally they have something that you can kind of check out and see if they have it if they have it you can rent it from them and then you know sort of from that moment on you can see if you like it if you like it i'm pretty sure they give you a hookup if you tell them that i sent you they'll be nice to you <laughs> you're not gonna get a discount um it's just because you know camera prices i mean camera don't have high markups nowadays so that's what it is but support your local camera store because nothing sucks more than you need something from your camera store and they're not around anyway yes sammy said if i go to hawaii let me make this you know instagram friendly if i go to hawaii i'm gonna go to pro camera hawaii thank you sam i am bam what is up dad tana what's cracking okay there we go we throw sammy in the middle right there uh yeah i should you know what bicky i should get a hat from them <laughs> I have like eight of them. I have Pro Camera Hawaii hats in like every color. <laughs> anyway, let me do this. I just pulled open the fun tab. And look, I'm getting excited. My hands is getting slippery over here. All right, let's get it open. No, uh, Dan, Hawaii is the United States, so they can ship anywhere. <laughs> um, yeah. And we use the United States post office like everybody else. <laughs> it's funny. It's funny. Oftentimes I go to order stuff and they're like, oh, we don't ship international. And I'm like, dude, what the hell is wrong with your flag? There's 50 stars on that joint. We're number 50. Boom. All righty. There's that. Let's get that out of there. What else comes in the box? All right, decent packaging. Nowhere near as crazy as our friends from Sony. Sony be doing like all kind of weird origami packaging and whatnot. Let's see what else is in the old Bizox. All right, you got the requisite strap. In the chat real quick, how many folks use the real deal strap or how many people swap it out for something sexy? Like I never use the real strap. I normally go with the lightweight peak design. I'll show you why in a second off my X100 uh, V. I'm going to start saying five and six. All right. Listen, this drives me crazy. All of these guys come with, you know, a little charging cable. Right. I don't like these cables because they are thick and unwieldy. And this type of, uh, this material that they cover it with, they tend to stick to stuff. Um, it comes with some uh, rings in order to kind of hang it on the side. <laughs> Luis and Dan both say they swap straps. Yo, I never use, actually, Luis, uh, Mr. Camera Junkie in the chat, of course it comes with a battery. Mr. Camera Junkie turned me on to this thing here. I got it. I got it. So I have had these peak design joints in my gear kit for years. And you know what? I never paid attention to until I learned this from Mr. Camera Junkie. Listen, I'm going to show you. This is so stupid. I can't believe I didn't know this. Put it on your wrist, cinch it up how you be, and then wrap it around. And the magnet, uh oh, I done got too fat the magnet magnets to here so when you're not using it it's just there but when you rent to go all you gotta do is take your little strap throw it on your camera like such switch switches on the next block and look you're safe right so if you're shooting shooting drop oh no no drop right shooting shooting drop oh no drop but when you get where you be, all you have to do, squeeze a little button, take it off, and thanks to, hey, focus, Ozbot. Where's my Ozbot control? Come here. Come here. Focus. There we go. Um, yeah, I didn't know this. Louise told me this, and I'm like, you stupid. That's been there the whole time, and I never freaking knew that. So... This is why you follow Mr. Camera Junkie, because, well, like it says in his name, 
He's a camera junkie. Anyway, this little joint is the Peak Design L bracket, but I just got the I bracket for smaller cameras. And that allows you to throw a couple fingers. Never mind. Don't say it, Craig. Throw a couple fingers in there. And then, you know, you always got your camera kind of like good to go. And then, yeah. And again, with the Peak Strap, I can just, you know, hit a crossbody action, throw this in here. Right, right, Brown? Even Brown said he didn't know. I mean, telling you, man, I thought I was cray-cray. Look, so then you get a nice little strap action like this. I like this setup. You know what I mean? So this little hand clutch, it's called the micro clutch. Um, dope, the little tool for it is right here. You just press this little joint in. It comes out. It's a little magnetated. You can do it. The reason why I like this, of all of the things that are out there, this will keep you from scratching up the bottom of your camera, which is dope. It doesn't add a lot of weight. And then, again, you just throw a couple fingers in there. And then, you know, you got a good grip. This uh, little, normally like this, I added this piece. These are like 20 bucks. But that's because I got fat thumbs. It also keeps me from accidentally, you know, twirling the exposure on the top. So, to me, this is a nice little setup. But let's look into the next one. Boom. All right. We're going to get her out of this bag. Come out of the bag, girl. Come out of the bag. Oh, look at that. The first thing, the very first thing, I always trip out on a baby like this here is, look, check this out. I love this new remote. I can do one of these. Are you awake? Uh-oh, remote's dead. Don't be dead, remote. Oh, you stupid. Okay, that's why my remote's not working. Let me charge the remote a little bit while we over here. Man, gotta remember to charge the remote. Anyway, the first thing I love about these is I love the cap. It's real build quality. It's not plastic. It has a nice little snug fit. It just drops right on and game recognized game. So the, the skinniness of this makes it very pocketable. But yet, this is a 40 megapixel. Man, my hands, sticky fingers already messed up the glass. It's a 40 megapixel joint, whereas this old one was like 23. So you got 40 megapixels. The size, everything looks basically the same. It's a little thicker. By like smidgen. It's just a smidgen thicker. Um, it's hard to guess the weight because I have an eye plate on the bottom. And don't really want to take it off. <laughs> so we'll save that thought. I'll, I'll look it up on the internet because it's quicker. Um, it still has a nice little slide right there. All the dials are in the same position. Still the same amount of twist action, pick up, turn. Yep. The feeling is the same. It hasn't really changed there. The one thing I would definitely say that's kind of a pain in the butt with the Fuji, the on and off switch is very easy to turn on and off. So you got to be a little cognizant of that. And normally I put a rubber shutter release button here on the top. I have extras in my little case over here. I'll pull one out in a second. Um, everything else looks the same. Ooh. Yeah, we got we got we got Bush. Look inside. Still with the dang micro USB. Oh, that's HDMI. Sorry. We have USB C, which is gravy. So you can charge a USB C. And we have the 2.5 jack for uh remote or for a microphone. So that's good. Micro HDMI. Battery door with the heat cover. What this means is if you have to use a dummy battery, you can pull that little thing open and you got a place to have your dummy battery going in there. Um, SD card slot is right there. They did not upgrade the SD card slot to UHS-2, but I mean, most people are using this for, most people are using this for photos and not video. So having the faster UHS-2, you know, not even that big a deal. Listen, Tony, I want to rock this hat, but it's hot in my studio today. So off with the brim. 
<laughs> Sorry, Tony. I, I don't want I don't want Pro Camera to be mad at me, but you know it's hot in the mug in that brim. You know what I'm saying? All right. So let's take a look there. Um, Kim. Kim says. I've been out the oi, don't move, move, come back, come back, Kim. Kim said, I've been out the loop for a minute. Why folks be going to to uh the Fuji? Well, Kim, let me explain it to you. Um, it's not that I still don't use my Sony's. I love my Sony's. One of the things that made me sort of start thinking about going to the Fuji game is again. I was looking for a camera that was somewhat point and shoot. Let's call it advanced. I wanted an advanced point and shoot camera that I can use to go back to taking pictures for taking pictures sake. I meant like photographer gate me. I wanted the photographer gate. And one of the things that the Fuji does dopely is the JPEGs straight out of camera. I mean, straight out of camera JPEGs are gorgeous. Look at that. Look at that. People in Hawaii who know, they know. This is a Japan action, actually. I was in Japan, but look at that. JPEG straight out of camera are gorgeous. They do shoot in raw, so you can get in there and you can mess around. But what you have is a whole bunch of film simulations built in. And those film simulations just help you spit out some freaking glorious glorious pictures and they're just amazing like they're just amazing here i'll show you again here's another one it's going to be kind of embiggen but i'll unembiggen it for this for the gram uh you know what i mean i'm sorry i'm looking straight into the camera making weird light but the the film quality and if you ever shot film camera, you can go in there with the film simulations. I'll run through them in a second. You have your Provia, your Astra, your classic negative, your uh, positive film. Uh, what else do they have? Vel, 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 uh, I want to say Velveeta. <laughs> anyway, so it got popular with the gram and it really got popular with the tiktokers because if you watch people on on tiktok when they're sharing their photos everybody's trying to get that visco girl look but without using filters so that whole visco game was basically software copying what the fujis have always done so somebody in the the game and somebody in the TikTok or the gram game was like you know all of those filters y'all be buying from visco camera and all these other cameras is the same thing that's built into fuji film cameras or anybody that's been shooting film so i think kim a combination of the film camera coming back right the combination of old school digicams coming back I'm talking like Cybershot W30s, the old um, Canon PowerShot, like OGs when they were CMOS, CCD. Yeah, when they were CCD digital cameras and not CMOS digital cameras. The problem with the modern cameras, they've gotten so good, pictures no longer have that filmic vibe. You know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, everybody wanting that kind of film look there's two ways to do it get a film camera which right now film is crazy expensive or you get a fuji x100v or any of the fuji x series actually any of the fujis period you get the rico gr3 or the gr3x either or you get like an old school digicam if you can find it now what psycho how i got into this path is i was watching this creator she's a dope creator named coco out of korea and she was talking about the old fuji w30 which was like a, i'm sorry xp30 which was like a 200 dollars actually you could buy them for like 50 75 to 150 bucks then they got the 200 bucks and by the time i decided to buy one they were up to like 400 so that was ignorant i'm not paying 400 for a camera that was basically free two months ago and then 
I decided to jump into Rico. The Rico was giving me that that look I was looking for. So I was like, yeah, let's do this. Let's do this like Brutus. And that's how the whole Fuji thing started. Boom. Uh, Dan said, what's the primary use for this? Honestly, again, Dan, okay, like imagine you, you know, you baby daddy, you got your camera to go out and just have fun, take pictures of the family. You're not thinking about content creating. That's this, right? Uh, something like the ZV-1, same thing. Something like the RX-100, same thing. Something you can slip in your pocket, take real, you know, high, high resolution cameras, stronger than an iPhone, quality level pictures that you're not going to start thinking about, like, I got to post this to the grant. Um, there is a video mode. Famously, the video mode sucks. Yo, yo, what's up, Taka? Taka, look. Look at Taka. I got the new Fuji. Straight from your motherland. Actually, when whenever I go to visit uh, Taka's wife's family in Nagoya, uh, the Fuji building is right by the station when you pop out. So I, I see it all the time. Um, let's see. So, yes, uh, uh, Sammy, there is a video mode, but primarily the video mode is not that good. <laughs> ah, there you go. There you go. Boom. Yo, what up, Ed? What is it doing? What is it doing? Hello, Travel for Life. Welcome to the family. Yeah, see, she's telling you the facts. There really is nothing like film. There really is nothing like film. Um, yes, yeah, Sammy, you gotta find a really, really old one though. And the really old ones are just hard to come by. And now what people are doing because of like the old W series, the old cyber shots, um, people are literally like six, 700 bucks for this really, really old cameras. That's show. That's show. Taka says, so yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Yes. Uh, I totally missed the old film life. Um, can you tell us? Yeah, let's, I'm going to pop in the battery real quick and just take some initial images and see what I see. Um, boom, boom, boom. I, the thing that's going to get me, um, Travel for Life, just tell us your actual name so I don't have to call you by a weird name. Um, the thing that I think is going to be the number one stunner is the fact that it's 40 megapixels now. The one thing that drives me crazy about this Fuji Oh, Kim Bucha, if you're still here, I got a picture to show you. Thank you, Rose. That's my, uh, my, I have a family member named Rose, but we call her Rosita. Oh, that is so dumb. Why you do that? <laughs> uh, anyway, pop this in. Bam. All right. Let's see. You know what drives me crazy? Manufacturers that don't ship batteries charged. <laughs> All right. Let's go English. And we want to do GMT. Minus 10. Welcome to Honolulu. Daylight savings, never that. Uh, today is 24 to 28. It's not 29 yet. 29 where some of y'all is. And then it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 17. 17, 10. Come on, hurry up before it changes. All right. This is me. I'm very much the weirdo that does this. Nailed it. <laughs> I try to make it land exactly on the time. Don't ask me why. Hold on. This is going to drive my, my friend. Anna gets really mad at me when I do this. So let me do it like this. <laughs> so it's not exactly, you know, just a talking head. And this also would help me remember to keep things in the center. Okay. So I have the Fuji app on my phone. I will say one of the things I do not like about the Fuji cameras is the phone app is trash. <laughs> it's horrible. It's super, super horrible. <laughs> but um, yeah, anyway, let me go back to doing what I was doing. <laughs> so I can go ahead and say in that. Dun, 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 dun. All right. So it has no storage media. 
I can't get the storage media out of here. Let me grab another oy, grab another card. You know what? This is why we're gonna take the strap off before we create an accident. We're gonna take the strap off before we create an accident. Now, you'll notice that on this particular Fuji, I did a couple of things. I added a uh, filter ring here, and then I put on a black Pro Mist filter because it just looks really good with the images that come out of here. The disadvantage of the black Pro Mist filter, though, this cap no longer works. So then you have to use another cap. But in order to get to the filter rings on the Fuji, you just screw this piece off. And then you have to put an adapter ring on there that will allow you to then put filters on it. I think now what I'm gonna end up doing, I also got the black one, but the black one's still not in yet. I think I'm going to leave one of them bone stock, which will probably be the black one. And then I will build this one up to be more like this, where it has things on it. I don't think I'll leave the black one bone stock just because I could have option for one that just slips in the pocket, run, gun, do your thing, and then another one to, to get all weird with, if you will. Okay, Venus, if you will. All right, let me just snag a shot real quick. Oh yeah, I forgot to put the memory card in. Hello. 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 Uh, dude, Eddie, you live in the home of B&H. <laughs> all you gotta do is go to 33rd, in Manhattan, go to 33rd and step into B and H and grab one. <laughs> yeah. Man, I, I have an image that I wanna show to you guys that I took when I was in the land of the rising sun. Which epitomizes why I love this camera so much. Let me see if I can grab it real quick. Where'd my photos app go? All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna search this super quickly so that I can find it. I was there just a wee little bit ago and I was walking around at night and it just started to pour down raining. And I happened to see this line of people just like running to get to cover because it was raining pretty hard. It's the middle of December. So it's cold as heck, right? So in the process in Japan, everybody there is really, really cool about having their umbrella and being ready to go. I seen this OG walking by and he had Owagasa, which is the old school Japanese umbrella reminiscent of the, how would you call it? Reminiscent of the thing that you get in a cocktail. You know, when you, when you go somewhere and you catch a cocktail, um, he had that old school joint walking in the rain. And it was such a contrast to see this dude doing his thing versus everybody else with the modern umbrella and understanding that Japan at night with all the LED signs and everything, it also has a hyper-modern vibe. And here's this OG contrasting the that process while he's running through the rain with a literally 1900s umbrella. Man, I just realized I took way too many pictures in Japan. What I should have did was marked it as a favorite, hello, so that you can find it. Why is it not in here? Uh, oh, I know what I can look for. I'll use my phone, it'll be faster. Yeah, um, Rose said, they're kind of sort of out of stock round about everywhere. Let me go to favorites. I'm pretty sure I saved it in my favorites. But yeah, it's uh, quite amazing. All right. Dun, 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 dun. You're a donkey, dude. You did not save it as a favorites. What an 
ignoramus. All right, now I got to search by city. Hakata. Oh, here's another one. Actually, another one that I took with the Fuji middle of the night. Just OGs walking around I thought was really cool. Let me send this to the phone real quick. I mean, send this to the computer. And you'll see, like, this is just why I fell in love with this camera. Like, to be able to just grab a photo of just something cool that catches your eye. You're not really planning it. It has that old school filmic look to it. Like, yeah, if, I mean, if you're if you're just a creator, and you don't you're not really into content. You probably don't give a care. But if you are a content creator and you love content creating for content's sake and you love, uh, say, photography or you came from film, you know, if you're an old school film shooter. Yo, there won't be nothing better. They just won't. That that feeling of catching a good shot, you know, the enjoyment of the hunt. Like I'm I'm a street photographer. That's what I no normally do when I'm not goofing. I'm doing street photography. For me, the hunt is life. Sitting in the cut, uh, you know, with a coffee, hiding somewhere, just waiting to get that one dope shot. To me, that is everything. That, my friend, is everything. Okay, this just popped over. Let me show you what I mean. I got one. I got one. What's up, Mr. Hunt? This is one of those shots that I just happened to catch. This really cool OG walking across the middle of the street in Japan. And to me, it was the dopest thing ever. Like, this this is the why, why you going to hunt and your street photography and you'll be looking for just a random shot of somebody doing something. People, I like to catch people in everyday life doing what they do. That's kind of the fun for me. Here, here's, a, here's another one. Let me show you. Here's this OG. It's almost there. Come on. There you go. Phone just did it. This is what I mean. Boom. Things like that. Right. This is done with the with my Fuji um, X one hundred four five. Damn, I can't even speak English. You know, just right place, right time. Dope shot. Old man minding his business, but it was just something really, really cool about that particular shot. You know, in the middle of uh, uh, Hakata, uh, what do you call it, Kichi. Kichi Chogai. There you go. That's the proper terminology. So, yeah, this is, you know, as I as I talk about, you know, what I'm doing. This is why I just love this thing. You know what I mean? It's just one of those. One of those trips down the memory lane. All right. Let me. Uh, I don't know why I can't find it. I can't. The one I want to show you is so cool and I can't find it. I know I took it on December 14th because I just reminded myself and boom, 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 hit the comma 2023. Oh, you know what? Maybe instead of looking for it in, um, instead of looking for it in Apple photos, I should have been looking for it in Milio photos. It would have been way quicker, but yeah, anyway, I just wanted to, to, to give you guys a glimpse of just, yeah, why you do it? Anyway. Yeah, his bag is dope. Dude, Japan, you got to catch a train everywhere. So everybody has these bags. You know what I'm saying? God, no. Why would I do that? That would just like, <laughs> that would just break everything. All right. So let's look at some of the film sims in here. I'm curious of what they put. I try to ignore... Um, the majority, oh, it still, it doesn't like this card. Come on, people. Let me grab another card out of my bag. Oy. This is why you have a bag full of cool stuff. Action cameras. SD card thing. Sammy, this thing right here is life. Boom. Pull out a five twizzy. Bam. <laughs> All right. What do you mean to 
is protected. Oh, you're going to make me fight. I might have accidentally hit the switch. There we go. Hit the menu. All right. So first thing, format. I like to shoot all of my joints in 16 by 9. Call me a weirdo. Uh, format. I like to do uh, fine plus raw. Boom. Uncompressed. JPEG or Heath. I'm going to go Heath. Simulations. There you go. You got Provia, Velvia, Astra, Classic Chrome. Riala Ace, Proneg, Proneg Standard. This is Proneg High. You got Classic Negative, Nostalgic Negative. These come out amazing. This is one of my favorite. Um, you got Eterna Cinema, that soft black and white shadow look, Beach Bypass, Acros, which is that harsh uh, black and white, Monochrome, and then Sepia, of course. So normally I'm somewhere in like the classic. Classic Chrome. See, I spent too much time in Japan. I'm normally in the classic Chrome vibe. That's just how I like it. I like to hit the green effect on weak. A little bit of green is there. And then you can go in here and dial so much. This is why this is an advanced point and shoot. You have your standard point and shoot action, but you can get in here and dial this thing out to your heart's content. So it's literally like using a film camera. You know what I mean? And you have this it's not a real automatic mode if you will but what i tend to do is come in street photography mode, set that joint to like 500 right because you want to freeze the action and then leave the uh iso on auto so having the bigger sensor even though the iso stuff are going to be the same the images will be better because it's a bigger sensor or it's a bigger um uh, bigger megapixels now the other thing when you're in here this is going to be hard to see on here but when you rotate the little wheel there it does this crop and so because you have bigger sense and you know what i know how to do it haha <laughs> let me do it that way bingo all right so say we're looking at that and then i go i can crop in really really big now okay and so with the big crop it might not be on autofocus at the moment. Let's see. Oh, there it is. I love that tap to focus. But with that bigger crop and having a bigger image, when you go out to get that 70 millimeter look or that 50 millimeter look, so like back here is 50 millimeter look, and then all the way back here is a 28 millimeter, but it's really 35. It's roughly 35 because APS-C. It's a 23. So um, 23 times 1.5 comes up like 34-ish, whatever. But you're going to come out with just a, an amazing look. So there's no zoom per se. So what you just do is you just change the, the sort of the millimeters in there, and then you get that, you get that gangster look. It's just, yeah, man, it's cool. It is what it is. You know, here. I can't wait to go out and shoot with this bad boy. Here's one of them JPEGs just looking sexy straight out of camera. It doesn't have that harsh, over shiny iPhone vibe. You know what I mean? It just has a look. That's why I love it. Super dope. <laughs> the last airbender. Ah, oh, that's dope. Oh, you shoot them at 250? I like to go 500 for the hard freeze, but yes, definitely. Um, oh, Rose, that was another one of the updates. You can, because of this now has IBIS, in-body stabilization, you can hand hold down to two seconds with no shaky. That's crazy. This one was hard to handhold at like 30. At like 30, uh, 1 over 30, you start to get a little blur to your edges. But that's because this had no IBIS. This guy has IBIS. 
So you're going to be able to hand hold it down to one over two. If you're really good, you can hand hold it down to a full second. That's crazy. That is stupid crazy. Like, come on. Let me uh, let me try something. I'm gonna do I'm gonna do one right now. I'm gonna set it for one over eight. Lid off. Handheld. Looking at this Fuji here. Looking at the Fuji, it's about that time. Yo, that's at five six too. Holy crap. All right, let me see. I'm gonna pull the memory card out and transfer this to the computer real quick. Plus, Mr. Camera Junkie said he wanted to see how big the images were. So, we're gonna take a look at a handheld picture that was shot at a shutter speed of one over eight at five six and at an ISO at 1280. I actually could have bring that ISO down if I were to use, um, uh, a better shutter speed but let's just take a look I'm just curious straight out the box boom what we got here Fuji 101 there's a Heath one thing that's cool about Heath images is they just work you don't have to um you don't have to do any weird conversions on the Apple. Okay, I lied. Fuji Heath images aren't like that. Yo, hold on, hold on. Let me let me change this to JPEG real quick. Actually, for these samples, I should have switched them to JPEG. It'd be faster. Uh, export. I am going to change it to JPEG now that I know that it doesn't. The Heath doesn't work with Apple straight out the gate. Anyway, uh, Luis, the Heath is uh, 30 megabytes. But that's actually pretty clean for the, the ISO at 12,800 at eight seconds, five over six. Actually, I'm gonna use a better, I'm gonna use a better subject matter. Hold up, wait a minute, let me put some bass in it. I'm gonna use a better subject matter because then we'll get a better idea of what we're looking at here. Hold on, hold that thought. And uh, I literally just had this in my hand two days ago. Here, this will give us an exact idea, right? Don't fall, stay right there. I'm gonna take two images. First thing I'm gonna do is set this to, I'm gonna leave it at one over eight, but I'm gonna take the F, I'm gonna set the F to like 2.8. Then I'm gonna take this ISO And I'm going to just set it to like 800. It's too bright. <laughs> How crazy is that? How crazy is that? I'm going to bring the ISO down to like 200. Okay. Let's look at this. That is crazy. I'm gonna do shutter speed of one over two. Can't even get my ISO dark enough. I almost need to have a, a ND filter on here. All right, handheld at two seconds, and we're gonna look at a target. So that way you can see how crazy this is. Hey, wait, 
I gotta put this back on before Tony gets mad. <laughs> Yo, this is crazy. The Ibis is freaking phenomenal. The Ibis is phenomenal. Holy crap. All right, let's go here. Boom. DSIM, Fooch. And uh, put drag out a couple of these heaps. I just want you to see how dope these are. I totally should have um, changed it to JPEG so I wouldn't have to do what I'm doing right now. <laughs> it's kind of stupid. My bad. All right. So here it is. This is pulling out a JPEG. Handheld family. Handheld at one over eight. And let me just get the target in the middle here. That's handheld at one over eight. This is stupid. This is all day stupid. Come on, son. Come on. That is crazy. Right down to the little weed dot in the middle. And then let me slide it this way. Look at the millimeter lines where it says um, MSCC PV 1220. Actually, in IG, the words on the bottom might block that. Let me pull it up. Look how tight that is. That's at one over eight. Let me pull out the one that I did that's one over two. <laughs> like, here, let me uh, do a quick get info, make sure I grab the right one. Go ahead. It's the last one. Let's do that again. All right, got it, got it, got it. All right, I'm gonna show you. Let me swap this to JPEG. All right, that one's a, a tad bit shaky. <laughs> that was a tad bit shaky, but still, it's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. Come on, export. My old butt can do one over two. Some people can't, but just so you can see, that's one over two. But I'm still amazed at one over eight, dude. That's mad tight, especially for street folks, us street people. Luis could probably hold the one over two. I can't. <laughs> I've, I watched people on the on the net do it, and didn't work for me. That is crazy. But yeah, first thought: take it off of um, take it off of Heath, and. I thought that would be better because heaps are smaller, but because I'm going to end up dragging it to the computer to do things. All right, so now let's take a look at color rendition real quick. One second. All right, just want to see what it looks like. All right, let me go back to one. I'm going to put it up. Two. change the aperture to 2.8 and then get my speed up actually just for the cleanliness I'm going to do it at 5.6 just so you can see color renditions oh yeah I have a um I had a film look on. Let me turn that off before we cause us a problem. We're just going to go to standard. Provia standard. JPEG. Bingo. All right. Let me pull the card out. I should, I should have set this up to tether. <laughs> it would have been so much more smart. When I was at Pro Camera today, I didn't grab a tether tool. But if I would have grabbed the tether tool, that would have made this process so much easier. Why? Why didn't you tell me that, Tony? Super silly. All right, let's go. Let's go. All right. Transferring over now. This should be quicker because I changed it to JPEG. Bingo card is in. And JPEG.
That's what the color checker looks like straight out of camera off a of JPEG. It's actually pretty good. It's actually pretty good. Yeah, that's impressive. At the end of the day, that's pretty impressive. Let me grab another one. Maybe one where my hand shook a little bit less. No, that hand shook a little bit more. Never mind. <laughs> so, so that's straight out of camera. That's not me adjusting it, making any tweaks to it, whatever. That's standard straight out of camera. So, yeah, I got to say, man, she go. This guy is a beauty. It's an absolute beauty. Now, you guys want to hear Psycho? Let me see if I can find this. I happened to take a look right before I jumped on. And you are never going to believe this nonsense. Let me do this. <laughs> You're never going to believe this nonsense. Let me take a screenshot. This is what's happening on day one. Like, because today technically is day one. Look at this craziness. Day one. That is insane. That is absolutely insane. Absolutely insane. Day one. Let's see ones where people are actually bidding on. Hold on. Give me a second. Scrolling, looking. There's still a bunch of people putting it on there. A bunch of watchers. Um, watchers. This one, okay. So... 30 people watching, and this one probably will work, but 24, 90 something. That's, that's day one. Wait till everybody realizes that the pre-orders ain't happening the way they think. So a bunch of people grabbed their pre-orders and went to go get it day one because they knew it was going to be sold out. And yeah, it's already sold out. And a bunch of these are probably BS pre-orders too. But I'm curious as to, I don't know how to check eBay for like what's sold. It's been a minute. But I guarantee you it's about to be there. <laughs> I guarantee you it's about to be there. It's just nuts. That's nuts. Then a limited edition is coming out at the end of the month, which is going to be even more crazy. Hey, where'd my IG tab go? I lost you guys. There it is. All right, fam. That was fun. We did it. I'm going to go and uh, before it gets dark outside, go take some shots. Go see what it'd be like. Anyway, super excited. Uh, it was good fun. And then I'll see you guys in the next time. <laughs> yes, you could. 100% savvy. Yes, you could. Mind blowing. Mind blowing. All right. Family, you guys been good. I'll see you guys on the flip. Peace out. A Town Stop. <laughs> City of mine, how I love, how I love the city of mine. It never gets me down. City.